Hi, good morning. So um, today is um, the 26th of August um, 2020 and at 8am every week we do a um, live streaming webinar for our um, ZB Developer Zone members and this is that webinar. Um, I've changed computers, I've changed camera and I've changed um, microphone this week so I really hope um, we have a better experience um, than I have had been having recently um, but anyway thank you for um, coming along this week and I'll just kind of go straight to it so every week I do put up this slide and um, it is good to revisit in a bit more detail actually because this is the ZP Developer Zone members um, webinar we do it at 8am London time every week and the question is you, you could ask you know why why do we do it? Um, and the reason we do it is because we think by disseminating information and encouraging engagement, we can essentially build a stronger biosensor community. And I genuinely believe that, you know, there's many, there's many ways of, you know, improving the world. And, you know, just one small way is to, you know, have better biosensors so that we can monitor people's health. Um, <laughs> Look at Ali says, you've come with so many changes. Thank you, Ali. Yeah, we can, you know, if we have better biosensors, we can improve people's health. I think we can, if we have better sensors, we can improve agriculture. If we have better sensors, we can food, um, improve food production. So I generally, um, if we have actually better sensors, we can improve water health. So why do we do this? Because, you know, we're not going to overplay the role of sensors in improving society. But I do believe that you know, sensors can at least be part of improving society, the most obvious one being health. So um, let's just say that, you know, as part of the ZP Developer Zone, you know, you have special access to the Academy, um, the ZP Academy, and, and I will put some links below later on. We do this webinar every week. Ali knows, you know, that we're very, you know, sincere. We, 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 dis you know, we, we always do the webinar, you know, computer problems, internet problems, but we always try to do it. Um, we are very, um, through, the, through this, we are very collaborative. Um, we have done um, a couple of papers, more than a couple of papers with um, ZP Developers Own members. Um, so we definitely have um, collaborations. We are also offering up um, employment. We're trying to figure out some employment for some of the ZP Developers Own um, members. You know, so there's a sort of, you know, whoops. So there's a, um, a road to um, employment at ZP through the ZP Developer Zone. And um, just one other thing that I want to sort of touch upon a bit this morning um, is this is um, something I've just slightly changed the wording here. Workshops. I put here summer school, but I should just, just really put um, um, schools. So that's something I want to touch on um, near the end. So... Um, every week, this forum, or sorry, this webinar is driven by um, our ZP Developer Zone forum. Um, so in the forum, you know, I ask people to, you know, if you've got any questions, you know, many subjects really, but they're all around biosensing. You know, I, I, I ask people to, you know, post your questions there and people are kind enough um, to do it. Um, now, a couple of questions that we've had this week are, um, first question is, um, when to replace a, a glucose biosensor? And um, we'll get into the depth of it, or we'll get into the details of it in a, in a second, but essentially it's like, you know, I've been using my glucose sensor for a few months. Um, when do I replace it? So we will deal with that. And then on the previous slide, I said, you know, well, you know, as a ZP Developer Zone member, you can also have access to um, courses on the, on the um, academy. And so... Uh, one of the courses, um, some of the courses are paid for, but the guy, um, the member said, look, you know, I've bought some glucose sensors off you, so fair enough. And um, I'm also, and he is a regular attendee at the ZP Developer Zone webinars. And so he asked, well, can I have the course for, you know, for free? And we figured that out this morning for him. We gave him a 100% discount code. So the answer is yes, you know, we can. Some of the content we have on our websites, you know, it's paid content. Hi, Aftab, nice to see you this morning. Some of the content on our websites is um, paid for, 
but if you remember the ZP developer zone, especially if you've been buying some of our bias sensors or screen printer electrodes, then we can um, give access to that. So the question here is um, when to replace a glucose bias sensor. So it says, you know, we've been using a glucose bias sensor gen one for a few months. So that's the first good thing to note. Actually, they've got one of the ZP glucose sensors and he's been using it for a few months. So I find that actually quite encouraging because, you know, it tells you, and I've always said this, that glucose sensors are actually quite robust or electrochemical glucose sensors are really quite robust. I also quite like the next line as well. We've been mostly using it um, to measure glucose in drinks. Um, I mean, if you're ever interested, if you Google sort of Zimmer and Peacock, glucose sensors, Coca-Cola, you will see that, you know, there are some videos out there that you, you can measure the glucose in Coca-Cola and you can contrast it with um, sort of sugar-free um, Coca-Cola as well. So that they definitely work in matrices like um, Coca-Cola or sugary drinks. So I think that's quite encouraging that the sensor does last months and you can use it. Oh, hi, Hanadi. How are you? Um, so, Hana, so nice to, nice to see you here this morning. Um, so we're quite sincere, um, not sincere, but I'm interested in this because he's been using the sensor for months. That's a good sign. And actually, he's been using it um, in a real world application, you know, measuring the Coca-Cola, um, the glucose in, in, in um, drinks. Um, now, his question here is, how long can I use the sensor before I replace it? And it's it's a tricky question, and I'll, and the next slide will kind of answer the tricky question um, as to why that is quite tricky. Um, he's asking, is there any characteristics in the signal I should look for? And the characteristic in the signal you should look for is, over time, you will lose sensitivity. I think the biggest degradation in signal on a glucose sensor, on a generation one glucose sensor, is loss of enzyme activity. Um, you know, we, we've done this many times and I feel like, you know, even, even the questioner has a lot of experience with this, but you know, with a glucose, with a generation one glucose sensor, you know, a simple one would be, you know, a platinum electrode, a layer of, um, glucose oxidase on top of that and a barrier layer on top of that. I realize I say that it's quite a simple stack of materials, really platinum enzyme, and then a barrier layer. Um, so there's not that much to go wrong. I think the of all of those layers, the layer that's most, let's say, sensitive is that enzyme layer. Um, and if your enzyme layer is going bad, then your s apparent sensitivity will decrease. Um, and also your linearity will decrease. Um, you essentially, you know, you'll stop responding to glucose um, after certain concentrations. So. Now he's talking about drinks here. I suspect the glucose in drinks is much higher than the glucose in blood, but you know, typically you would want linearity from um, zero to 20 millimolar, which is about um, zero to 180 milligrams per deciliter. Um, and as the enzyme decreases, both the signal strength you'll get will decrease, but also you might not get linearity from zero to 20 millimolar you only get linearity from zero to 15 millimolar and then zero to 10 millimolar because essentially the enzyme is running out yeah he's ali's asking here what about signal drift is it serious in the long-term use i think signal drift is serious in the long-term use ali i've got a suspicion that signal drift might also be sensitivity um a loss of sensitivity so good questions good application Guy's been using the sensor for months. Um, so let's dig in a little bit now to his, um, well, let's, this is data that I've shown to Ali and to Aftab um, quite a bit over the years. Um, not over the years, over the last few months. This data is actually old. Now this sensor is still running by the way, but at, at the time of at, that I first to get put together this slide, we've had this glucose sensor um, in operation for 125 days. So I suspect that the inquirer, he's not use, leaving this sensor continuously running. If I was clever, I would tell you how many, how many like, hours of continuous operation this is, but it's sort of, sorry, bad maths, 250, 2,500 hours. So this sensor has been running, let's say for quite a long time. I generally suspect that the glucose sensor that they have, they're not using it that much. You know, they might use, you know, use it a, a few hours a day 
but not 24-7 like we have. So quick answer is um, these, sen these glucose sensors can last a long time. And this is an example of one that's been running for 125 days. Now, what we're doing is we're changing it from glucose to zero, glucose, glucose to zero, glucose. So we can see that it's still responding. So it's not just a, you know, sort of flat baseline. You know, we are looking at the signal. But what you'll notice is, and this is a bit linked to Ali's point earlier on, um, you know, there is drift in this sensor. You know, I've essentially got two segments where I've got essentially drift downwards and then it stopped drifting um the drift is not terrible if you were looking at it over a week or something it wouldn't be terribly drifting but when you look over it, at it over months it is drifting we are more sensitive let's say in the green segment than we are in the red segment so we are losing um enzyme um activity i really don't think this is a problem for you know, most of the time this is not a problem because I mean this is 125 days it's a, it's a little uh, let's say extreme and we hadn't even optimized the sensor for this kind of length of run it literally is one of the glucose sensors that we have on our web store and we were getting into this big program and we were asking ourselves you know we obviously make tens of thousands of glucose sensors you know sort of a week these days and so we were just asking ourselves the question one of those standard glucose sensors, how long will it last for? Put it in an experiment and started it, but it lasts a long time. But there is drift on it, but basically I think it's a lock, it's, a, it's the sensitivity is drifting. We do have a lot more sensitivity at the beginning than we do at the end, but it is actually still running. This is, if you were doing, um, yeah, I would say this, Ali's just beat me to the, to the punch really, which is if I was building a system for continuously monitoring glucose, let's say in a, bioreactor or some sort of food production or something where um, I just wanted to leave the sensor in place. I'd actually put a calibration routine in with this. I'd, I'd put a pump and a calibrant and I would, you know, have a sort of flow cell. So the sample went over the sensor and I got a reading and then periodically I would put a known glucose concentration over the sensor and do a calibration. So yeah, even the drift is not a problem as long as you, if you're aware of it, you can design it in and you can essentially calibrate it out. So Quick, the quick answer is Ali, I would have done what you've done. So we're, we're both thinking the same thing. So the question was, well, the original question I asked said, I've been using a sensor for a few months. I am using it in high glucose concentration. And I did note that because high glucose concentration generally means higher hydrogen peroxide sensing, um, sorry, hydro, higher hydrogen peroxide concentration and higher hydrogen peroxide concentration can end up damaging the sensor. Yeah, so um, Hamadi is asking, you know, can it be used in things like milk and juice? The quick answer is it absolutely can. I mean, this in particular inquirer is using it in beverages. We've measured glucose in um, in Coke, Coca-Cola, and Diet Coke. No, no, no need to mess around with the with, with, with the solutions or anything like that. Just put the sensor straight in it straight in there, and they work. Electrochemistry is so robust; it's crazy. Um, you know, the, the, the way you can just put it into a sample and, you know, sometimes, well, a lot of the time, not all of the time, the sensors carry on working. So great question from the inquirer. I think your sensor is actually going to last you quite a long time. Um, you are going to, you are losing sensitivity with it. Hi, Hitcham, how are you? Um, and um, he does ask, you know, what can I do to kind of, you know, rejuvenate my sensor? Um now the thing is, the the, the 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 layer that's probably degrading the most is actually that enzyme layer. So it's very hard to rejuvenate that enzyme layer. If you want to go for a lot a low cost glucose sensor, if I'm not, I'll tell I'll talk about how to rejuvenate it in a minute. But you know, if I was going to make, if I was trying to say like you're in academia and you want to make a very low cost glucose sensor, you know, honestly, we we sell packs of fifty um, platinum electrodes for like. Um, 300 euros, so they're sort of six euros each. It's practically six dollars each. You know, we sell one milliliter of um, activation solution for 99 um, euros. That's pretty close to 99 dollars. And we sell um, the barrier layer for 99, one milliliter for 99 um, dollars or euros. All that stacked up sort of says that, you know, this, I mean, there is shipping, you know, but 
quick maths on that. That will that's all less than five hundred dollars. I mean, you should be able to get easily fifty sensors out of it. If you if you want to repair a glucose sensor, I've not done it. I think it can happen, but you probably need a sharp um, scalpel and some very fine tweezers because essentially, you know, the layers are layered just on top of that platinum. The platinum is pretty robust. It's stuck to that su substrate really quite well. You should um, be able to get in there with a scalpel and actually peel it away, it's essentially force a delamination. I've not done it. So it's just that if I was answering the question, if you've got a glucose sensor, you want to repair it, you might, if you had these two solutions, you might actually be able to just peel away the old, let's say, sensing layer and put on a new um, activation solution. And we do have videos on the website about that. <laughs> Ali likes it. Um, and we might be able to, but then you have to put barrier layer on top of it as well. So um, you should be able, you should be able to repair it, but you will need a very sharp scalpel, I suspect, and some pretty good um, tweezers to do this. Um, now, something slightly now, I did say that being a member of the ZP Developer Zone, it you know it's a good way of collaborating with us, um, people who engage with us, you know, show interest. It also leads to jobs, um, and also I said that it um, it really helps to. Uh, we also have something called the ZP Academy. So the inquirer here is asking, I'm a member of the ZP Developer Zone. I've bought some glucose sensors off you. Um, and he wanted to access um, one of our paid courses on the ZP Academy. And um, he asked for a discount code. So we gave him a 100% discount code because essentially, you know, we're trying to build a community of people interested in biosensors. Um, and if we can support that community, then we're happy to do it. So now I only had, um, well, so we had a couple of inquiries this week. One of them was about the glucose sensor and then one of them was about getting free access to one of the glucose sensor courses. So I just want to sort of talk a bit about slightly different topic now that recently we've um, done some good webinars um, with some universities. So we did a good one with USN where we um, focused on essentially the research community in um, Vietnam. Um, and AFTAB organized, AFTAB is a um, ZP Developer Zone member. He also, um, and he organized um, a webinar with Amity Institute. And so my question really is, you know, ZP is quite happy to um, participate in these webinars with um, our academic colleagues. We also bring, you know, our own, net, our own network to these, these as well. With Amity, we brought um, Professor Eric Johannesson from USN. And so it's just a question to you all now. Um, if you're linked to universities in different global um, locations, and you think it would be interesting to kind of do a, have ZP do a webinar with the professors there, and to, you know, and to sort of have it more locally focused, um, then we're very happy to do that. So just to sort of shout out to say, look, ZP, um, we try to be generous with our time. We try to support, you know, people around the globe. We've obviously done it in Vietnam. We've done it in India. We've actually done it in Turkey. And if you want us to do a webinar in your local region, then just contact me and, you know, we can we can arrange that um, as well. Um, now, something else now that I'm sort of interested in, I'd be interested to kind of hear um, comments from people um, either in the chat now or by email um, on LinkedIn you know so uh, cool Hitcham says the webinars are always interesting for us well this is this is just an idea and I just wanted to kind of float it with you guys um, a little bit or oh, not a little bit a lot so I'm thinking that um, ZP would like to do a um, biosensor well electro analytical and biosensor school I don't mean a sort of full time of a full time three six five three hundred sixty five days a year type of school. I'm sort of I didn't put it as an option here, but I'm sort of thinking um, we should we're getting to the point now with the ZP Developer Zone um, with the webinars that we have um, going on that it might be time to have a more physical, let's say, event. Um, on the little map, I've actually shown where our Norwegian our, our Norwegian um, um, location is the reason being is I think we might hold it there just because that's what I've got the, the 
biggest amounts of resources in terms of labs, production, even got a very large conference um, room or even a, an auditorium rather in, in, in Norway. So the question I'm asking is, um, as we now start to come out of COVID-19, as we start to come out of COVID-19, it's still a risk, of course. Do we start thinking about a an electroanalytical and biosensor school in 2022? Um, and the questions I have, I'm not going to answer them. I think I'm going to ask you guys, essentially. Um, should we have it? How long should it be? You know, if I was asking people to come to, you know, should it be... I don't want it two weeks. I mean, that's extreme. But, you know, should it be five days, three days, two days, you know, just one day? You know, what time and dates? You know, because time and dates are important. You know, we don't want to clash with other events. I don't want to clash with religious festivals. I don't want to clash with national ho um, holidays. It isn't easy to have a global um, event, but um, I am interested in how long you think it should be. I think the venue might have to be Norway just because of the critical mass that we have in Norway, especially for the first one. Um, time and date's going to be really important to me. Sort of sponsors. And when I say sponsors, you know, ZP would be a sponsor. Um, you know, what are the kind of companies that you would like to see there? I mean, I'm sort of thinking, you know, a bit like Palm Sense or something like that. You know, they, they've got some cool technology. Um, I'm thinking about speakers. Um you know, who would you like to see at a a school like uh, a, a, an event like this? Um, lecture topics. So some of these words are a little bit repeated, but, you know, what would you actually like to hear about? Um, and then guest lectures. And I realize with guest lectures these days, we can actually do, you know, some of them will be, you know, there. We can even do online, you know. So it's not it's, it's OK these days, you know, to have a bit of a mix. But I, I do want this to be a, a physical event, you know, we're literally people will come. Um, but, you know, let's say there's a guest lecture. I'm thinking people like asking people like Tony Turner, for example. You know, he might, if I ask him, he might only come online. But was, you know, but who would you like there to see? Then I'm thinking about the practical demonstrations because I think we do a lot of good educational material, but it's just not the same, is it? You know, you have to genuinely do, sometimes do, you know, lab work. So, you know, what kind of practical demonstrations should should we have? You know, I'm sort of just some key thoughts here. Um, hands on electroanalytical demos, you know, um, um, electrode fabrication. I was thinking we should we, we could do, you know, how to make a carbon electrode, for example, um, biosensor fabrication. So I just described that, you know, you can make a glucose sensor. Um, so maybe we should have that actually in the hands on demos um, and then, you know, testing and characterization of biosensors um, I'm thinking a little bit maybe we also have a bit of a poster session you know so in, in, invite you know and then actually have a poster competition so you know encourage people to have that maybe have a bit of an expo mm -hmm. so ZP has you know products that we can sort of show um, if I invite somebody like Palm Sense they may be able to show their products just to add a bit more um, value so I'm just looking at the comments from Ali, who says it's a good idea. Hitch um, likes webinars. Aftab thinks a ZP school is a great idea. So I think this is the first time I floated this idea. Um, I'm not looking for like, you know, I, I know people have to cogitate on it. But honestly, if you I'm glad you think it's a good idea. I, th I think it's I think it's about time, you know, let's say um, the only thing that hel holds us off the you know is COVID-19 let's say um, but I'm hoping that you know the world will open up a bit and what I'm sort of thinking is the first one we do will be the pilot you know make sure that we understand how it all works all the logistics and then I don't mind you know going more global after that so just think about it really is is, is, is my um, final um, comments and I will think about it as well and I know that a couple of you like Ali and Aftab and Hitcham you know you guys, in a very good way, are very vocal. So give me your thoughts um, and, you know, we, we can start thinking about it and trying to think about ha making it happen. So in summary, um, we only had two technical inquiries this week, let's say. One of those on glucose sensing. Um, the guy's measuring glucose in beverages. He's been using his sensor for months, which is all good news. 
you probably are losing sensitivity. Um, yeah, so Hanadi is also recommending London, and I do agree with you, Hanadi. London is the is a good location because it's got a good airport and many people can get to it. I was still thinking that we'll do London, sort of thing like year two or something, because we do have a considerable presence. Not considerable. We have a good presence in um, in Coventry, so we, you know, I do have good um, scientists and equipment in um, in the UK. It's just. At the moment, I've got the biggest location in Norway, but Norway, I, I, as a as a hub for international people, not so good as London. But I think you know. But I I, I do take the point. I think London is you know a better hub. Let's say. Um, so the quick question is, uh, well, we had an inquiry about glucose sensors, which we've had a discussion about. Um, the same inquirer also wanted access to one of our academy courses, which was. Normally about, I think about 125 euros, but we gave it a course for free because, you know, we appreciate people who help us. And just have a think now about um, a summer school. I want to, I want to, yeah, yeah, good idea. We can start a discussion on ZP, on ZP developers. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will, I will do that. <laughs> so this is the FTAB's telling me to post an inquiry on my, on, on the, on the forum about this. And that's, that's a good point. I will do that. All right, so it's 8.26 London time. Um, thank you, Hanadi, for coming along today. Um, cheers, um, Hitchem and Ali and Aftab. You guys are always very supportive and it's very appreciated. Um, I will post about the summer school, um, as you say, on the forum. That's a good place to gather some opinions, so I will definitely do that. That's the best place because then we'll have all the opinions and all the comments together. All right, guys, thanks very much. Um, appreciate all the... Um, all the good um, ideas this morning and I will talk to you soon. All right, thank you very much. I think the change of computers has worked. All right, cool. Take care guys. I shall speak to you all 